For this, I would like to take a look at one of the many, 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 many definitions of natural log as an integral. integral. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. It's so much fun doing those videos in the last time. A little bit of analytical number theory. It's so much fun um, researching the stuff and working out the proofs. And yeah, it's, it's, such, it's such a cool task for me to present this to you guys. And I hope you do enjoy it too. Today, we're going to take a look at a really special number. To be honest, it's just one of many, 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 many real numbers, just like your regular or E and pi. The so-called euler macheroni constant, also formerly known as the oily macaroni constant. <laughs> and the thing about this number right here is that it's the, well, limiting difference of two diverging series. So we have recently shown that our harmonic series diverges and obviously our ln is strictly increasing. So the bigger the argument gets, the bigger our natural log actually gets. It, both of those grow really fucking slow. So oil of four, well, why not take a look at their difference and see if it actually converges to a certain value. And that's what we are going to do today. We are going to show that this limiting difference actually converges to the number called euler macheroni constant. It's a really, really elegant proof. And we are going to dive right in. Remember what our harmonic series actually is. The partial sums of our harmonic series are nothing but, well, those sums from k equals to 1 to n of 1 over k. And we're going to treat this as a little sequence, okay? We're going to take a look at some gamma n's, which are nothing but hn minus ln of n. And in the limit, when n goes to infinity, we are actually going to arrive at our gamma. And the basic thing here that we want to do, and you are doing this all the time in analysis calculus, is if you want to show that something actually converges, some series in the limit, we want to show that it, for example, strictly decreases all the time, meaning it's going to converge slowly to a certain value. For example, it's bounded by below, and it would look something like this right here, okay? It's going down and down. If you want to put this a little bit more formally, if we have a sequence member up here, for example, gamma n, okay, then the next sequence member, gamma n plus one, as you can see right here in the sketch, is, well, strictly less than our member before, meaning formally gamma n must be strictly greater than gamma n plus one. That's what we want to show, okay? And for this, it comes quite naturally. We, for example, subtract this on both sides and want to show that this difference is actually greater than zero. Okay, so what we want to do, for example, we want to take a look at um, gamma n minus gamma n minus one. Okay, just this difference right here. It's the same argument as this right here. And well, we have a definition for gamma n, so why not just uh, plug this in? So we have hn minus ln of n and then minus hn minus one, by this definition right here, plus, negative and negative becomes positive, I did a proof on that, the natural log of n minus one. If you take a closer look at the harmonic series, this harmonic series, this partial sum, is nothing but the sum from k equals to one to n minus one, meaning it's one plus one half plus blah, 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 up until one over n minus one. All of those terms right here are actually also included in here, except this harmonic series, this partial sum right here of the harmonic series actually goes to one over n, that's the last term. So this whole thing is going to cancel out with all the stuff right here, except for one over n. Take a piece of paper to write out for yourself, it's really easy to show. Also, we have our natural log properties or our logarithm properties in general. Meaning if you have natural log of A minus the natural log of B, you are going to get the natural log of A over B. We have this thing right here, this difference, ending us with the natural log of n minus one over n. This fraction right here, we can resolve it a little bit, just for um, clarification purposes. 
1 over n plus the natural log of, okay, this is n over n, which is nothing but 1 minus 1 over n. And now we have brought this natural log in a form that we can actually work with. Okay, bear with me. I'm doing most of this Taylor series stuff, I mean nearly everything in general, on this channel right here, as a little prerequisite, just for you guys. We have done Taylor series stuff extensively on this channel right now. So the natural log of 1 plus x, looking at that, we can express it as a Taylor series, running from 1 to infinity, I'm sorry that my case look so alike to the n's right here, I'm terribly sorry for that, of um, negative 1 to the k plus 1 of power over k times x to the k of power. And if we now plug our negative 1 over n in instead of our x, you could say, we're going to end up with a sum running from 1 to infinity, once again this small case is going down, I'm terribly sorry, of negative 1 to the k plus 1 of power over k. And then we have negative 1 over n to the k of power. Okay, how can we um, simplify this a little bit? So you see we can break this up into negative 1 to the k of power times 1 over n to the k of power. Then we have negative 1 to the k of power times this negative 1 term, giving us negative 1 to the 2k of power plus 1. Negative 1 to any even power is just positive 1. So all that's really left with this negative 1 term is nothing but well, negative. We can bring this constant to the front, so there's nothing but negative sum running from 1 to infinity of, and then we are going to get, well, 1 over k times 1 over n to the k power. And this is pretty fucking fantastic. You know why? If we plug this in, plus, okay, negative sign, we have a negative sign, sum running from 1 to infinity that's a k, not an n, I'm terribly sorry, of 1 over k, 1 over n to the k of power. What about our first member in this series right here, okay? If we plug 1 into here, that's 1 over 1, this is just 1, and 1 over n to the first power is just 1 over n. So the first member right here is actually 1 over n, but with a negative sign, meaning that's negative 1 over n, which is nothing but the um, additive inverse of our 1 over n. 2 minus 2 is 0. That's what I want to get at. So this and the first member is actually going to cancel out and we are left with negative sum running from k equals to 2 to infinity of, well, this argument right here. k is element of natural numbers, so this fraction right here is strictly positive. 1 over n, well, we are approaching it from the right, you could say, going to positive infinity over positive values. Element of natural numbers, that's a sequence right here that we are dealing with. So that's also positive. Something positive to any power is still positive. So this series in itself is strictly greater than zero. But if you multiply three, which is strictly greater than zero by negative one, you are going to get negative three. Et voila, it's negative. So this whole sum is strictly less than zero, leaving us with the fact that gamma n minus gamma n minus one is strictly less than zero. Now we are going to add this chunk on both sides, okay, this gamma of n minus one on both sides, then gamma n is strictly less than gamma n minus one. You might ask yourself, is this what we wanted to do? Yeah, if you plug n plus 1 into here, okay, instead of n, then, well, n minus 1 plus 1 is nothing but n. And this is what we actually wanted to show. Okay, <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So we have shown that our sequence is monotonically decreasing. But we can actually find another upper bound, so we can restrict this even more. If we take a look at gamma of 1, okay? The first member in this sequence, we are going to end up with h of 1 minus ln of 1, okay? ln of 1 is 0, h of 1 is a sum running from 1 to 1 of 1 over k, which is nothing but 1, okay? So actually, our gamma in the limit, so for n to infinity, is going to be strictly less than 1. Because, well, our first sequence member, something up here, is equal to 1, but it goes down, okay? So it's going to be 
strictly less than one in the limit. We have found an upper bound, but we still don't know if our gamma actually converges to a certain value. So we need to find a lower bound so that it's squeezed in between two bounds. And that's what we are going to do now. Here's something I really didn't say explicitly. <laughs> Um, but our sequence members are actually less or equal to one because we have shown that gamma of one is exactly one. So it really doesn't quite matter, but in the limit it holds that gamma is indeed strictly less than one. Maybe you didn't even care about that. Now we want to talk about the lower boundary. We want to show that our gamma in the limit is bounded by below. For this I would like to take a look at one of the many, 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 many definitions of natural log as an integral. Let's take a look at the natural log of n. And I hope you agree with me that this is nothing but the integral from 1 to n of, well, dt over t. Because that's going to give us natural log of t from 1 to n. Natural log of 1 is nothing but 0, leaving us with natural log of n. Coolio, my boy, bruh! But what we can do, if all those little partial integrals you could say exist, we can actually break this up using fundamental theorem of calculus or whatsoever or the area interpretation of the integral. Meaning if we have an integral from A to C, we can break this up if this integral exists from the integral to A to B plus the integral from B to C. Meaning let's break this up into an integral from 1 to 2 of dt over t plus integral from 2 to 3 dt over t plus dot 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 plus an integral from um, n minus 1, in this case to n, of dt over t. And this is nothing but, um, let me see, that's basically a finite sum running from, let's say, I really don't know, sigma. <laughs> Why not choose sigma this time? Sigma being equal to 1 to, um, if it goes to 1, let's see if we take this integral from sigma to sigma plus 1. We have to have it run to, I, I really didn't blend this out, that was, um, there was a little impulse on my side, just a spontaneous one. Yeah, then to n minus 1 in this case. Okay, this, this works out of dt over t. That's something we can do, we can write it like this. And now we want to show that those partial integrals, you could say, are actually bounded by above, by something. Okay, we're going to do this quite intuitively using something we have derived in Papa Flemish advent calendar actually. So let's take a look at the integral from sigma to sigma plus 1 of dt over t. Obviously it's going to give us the natural log of sigma plus 1 minus the natural log of sigma. <sighs> Papa, do you have sigma? No, I have ligma. <laughs> sigma! This is nothing but natural log of <laughs> sigma plus 1 over sigma and just like before that's natural log of 1 plus 1 over sigma, sigma balls. I want you guys to consider this argument right here, okay? 1 plus 1 over sigma. Like I said, we have derived something in Papa Flemish advent calendar. It had to do with the question if e to the pi is greater or less than um, pi to the e. And I have taken a look at e to the x and its Taylor series expansion, namely sum running from k equals to 0 to um, infinity of x to the kth power over k factorial. And actually we had created ourselves a little function where we have proven something, namely that e to the x is strictly greater or greater or equal than 1 plus x. It's only strictly greater at the time when our x is not equal to zero, if it's strictly positive, because if we plug zero into here, that's e to the zero of power being exactly equal to one. But in this case, our sigmas that we have right here, or our n's, never mind, are element of the um, natural numbers, so without zero. So we're going to start at one. That's what I want to get at. So e to the x is in our interval, basically, where we um, take a look at, at the sequence, never mind, is actually always strictly greater than 1 plus x. Meaning if we take 1 over sigma instead of x, we are going to get that this is strictly less than e to the 1 over sigma. 
Well, nice approximation. We have this argument, so that's strictly less than natural log of e to the 1 over sigma. Natural log and e is going to cancel out to 1 over sigma. <laughs> so we have find a nice estimation and yeah, we can do this for all those partial sums of this little sum right here. Meaning that's strictly less than the sum running from sigma from 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over sigma. <laughs> cool here. that's pretty fucking dope. And you might notice that this right here is nothing but the harmonic series of n minus 1. That's a crazy good approximation actually. Meaning, overall, that the natural log of n is strictly less than h n minus 1. In our Euler Mascherona, only <laughs> Only Mascherona, oh, I'm being fucking retarded right here. In our Euler Mascheroni constant, those sequences, those subsequences, whatsoever, we have that gamma n is nothing but hn minus the natural log of n. Right here, we have negative natural log of n. So multiply both sides by negative 1. That's the same as saying we have hn minus 1 is strictly less than uh, negative hn minus 1 is strictly less than negative ln of n. Meaning, this whole thing right here um, is then hn minus hn minus 1. And I'm sorry, I didn't know how to put it here, so I'm just going into the next line. So hn minus hn minus 1 is strictly less by this approximation than hn minus ln of n, which is nothing but gamma of n. I should have put it that way hn minus hn minus 1, we have talked about this before, is nothing but 1 over n. Okay, so you can simply ver verify this. That's quite easy. n is element of natural numbers starting at 1. So first we have 1. Okay, then we have 1 half, then we have 1 third, whatsoever. All of those, since they are element of natural numbers, are strictly created in 0 all the time. So we have 0 being strictly less than 1 over n, and 1 over n is strictly less than all those gamma n's. But gamma n is strictly less or equal to 1. And this is actually our approximation. Okay, and if we let n go to infinity, for n to infinity, we have that our gamma is, well, strictly bounded between 0 and 1. And gamma is something like 0 0.7. Nice irrational number. 0.7, dot 7. Yeah, and this has been it. This is our boy Euler Mascheroni constant, Euler Macaroni constant. And we have actually found out that this thing is bounded by below. So it looks something like this actually, okay? It's above zero. It converges to a nice and spicy value. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. If you can channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Give Daddy Euler some love and up until next video have a flammable day. See ya!